The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name, the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does evil things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the light, lives the truth, comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. You never really know someone until you know what's in their heart. What motivates them? What they're looking for? Why they do what they do? In the gospel passage we just listened to, Jesus lays bare the heart of God to, with Nicodemus, a member of the Sanhedrin, Israel's ruling body. Nicodemus was afraid to come to talk to Jesus during the daytime. So he came at night. So what message does Jesus give to this confused and fearful Jewish leader? And by the way, Jesus gives us the same message today. Why did he come? Because the Father sent him. Why did, Jesus, why did the Father send him? Because he loved the world so much. God simply couldn't bear to see us perish in our sins. He longed to share with us his everlasting life. God cares about you and I. And Jesus Christ is the definitive proof that, that he cares. He cares so much that he is willing to sacrifice his only son to atone for the sins that separated man from God, the source of all good things. And we need no need to look no further than to find the very core in the gospel reading today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So I want you to note that he doesn't say that God was so angry at the world, or so furious at the world, or so disappointed with the world. No, it says God so loved the world. You and I are part of that loved world. It is to you and me that these words are addressed. There's no hidden agenda. There's no selfish undertones, only pure generosity. This is the heart of God, of the Lord who longs for our friendship. And only when we internalize this fundamental motive of God does our Christian journey truly begin. So if you all look up here, I have a $10 bill. It's gone up a little bit yesterday since, Father, since the 4 o'clock Mass. Now with this $10 bill, you could go to Dunkin's and buy a couple of medium coffees and a couple of Boston creams. Would anyone like this $10 bill? Anybody here? Come on. Two Dunkin's. Okay. 
So I'm going to take this and I'm going to crumple up the $10 bill. Who wants it now? Few people. But what if I were to take this $10 bill, put it on the ground, and just crush it and step on it and put it into the dirt? Who wants it now? You want it now? My friends, we've all learned a lesson. No matter what I did to the money, you still wanted it. Because it did not decrease in value. It was still worth $10. Many times in our lives, we are dropped, we are crumpled and grounded to the dirt by the decisions that we make for ourselves, the circumstances that come into our lives. But we never lose value in God's eyes, whether we're dirty or clean, crumpled or finely creased, we are still priceless to our Creator, who knows us through and through and cherishes us no matter what. That's what the crucifix proves, and that is the cause of our Christian joy, a joy that no one can take away. Jesus wants us to be with him forever, so much that he was willing to be torn. He was willing to be crumpled and ground into the dirt. He was humiliated, but he loved us so much. God never gives up on us. He wants to be the savior that we need. This is the unquenchable source of every Christian joy and hope. We are truly blessed. We know that God loves us, that we are infinitely valuable in his eyes. No matter what, in spite of our sins, in spite of our failings and weaknesses. And if you don't know that, I'm here to tell you that today. St. Paul tells us that God, who is rich in mercy because of the great loves for, for us, even when we are dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ by the grace you have received. That grace is our sacraments, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of the Eucharist, and the graces that we received when we were baptized. We are God's. He loves us that much. He loves us that much that he wants to spend all our, his time with us. All we have to do is accept it. Mercy from God is not a reward for our goodness. It is given to us because of God's love for us, because he is merciful. But if we have learned nothing in our years of formation, we have certainly learned that we will not receive anything until we ask for it. Jesus told us to ask, to knock, to seek what we only want from God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. That's what he wants. He wants us to have that eternal life with him, to share that life. And it brings him great joy, and he rejoices when that happens. Every year in the middle of Lent, on the fourth Sunday of Lent, the church invites us to rejoice. This Sunday is Latare Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing. The rose-colored vestments, we don't wear because they just look good on us. Don't they look good? But they are a symbol of joy, like the pink horizon that comes from a beautiful sunrise. We have had three and a half weeks to meditate on our weaknesses and sinful tendencies. Latare Sunday is the church's way of giving us a shot in the arm as we approach the darkness and horror of the days through Good Friday and Holy Saturday. It's an opportunity to savor and keep in mind what awaits for us on Easter Sunday, the reality that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and our hearts will always be filled with joy. And so now we are able to appreciate more deeply how full and unconditional God's love for us is that while we were dead in our transgressions, as St. Paul puts it, 
God reaches down and rescues us. That's how we are in his eyes, that unquenchable source of that Christian joy. We're blessed to know this. But what about all those around us that don't know it? What about those people, our friends and family members, people that we work with that don't understand? We all know someone like Nicodemus, who even though he was successful in the eyes of the world, he was searching. He was unsatisfied in his heart. Christ wants that person to discover the joy that only God can give. And how will they discover it? That's our job. We need to tell them about it. We are Christ's messengers. Although we are imperfect, we're clumsy, we're ignorant, but that's okay. This week, let's show God how grateful we are for we are telling about his unconditional love, his unconditional mercy by telling someone else about it so that the sunrise of Christ's love can illuminate their hearts too. This Latare Sunday, let us share with all those who we meet, let us share the joy that God wants to share with us today.